Good morning, and today I'm back in the Black Mountains in the uh, eastern section of the Brecon Beacons National Park. And today I'm in the village of Thanthony with Thanthony Priory just over my left shoulder here. And today I'm doing a bit of an epic hike by my standards. It's um, the Vale of Ewes Horseshoe Walk, and it's about 17 miles, approximately 28 kilometers. So, what I'll be doing, heading up to the ridge right behind me here heading in a northwesterly direction to the peak of Hay Bluff um, before returning on the opposing ridge, um, coming back in a southeasterly direction and then dropping back into the valley and back to my starting point here this morning. Um, from what I've read it's approximately eight hours but we'll see how I progress along the way but it's an absolutely stunning morning it's a stunning day actually it's cold it's about minus two at present it's about quarter past eight in the morning so got a bit of a long one ahead of me so uh, I'll keep you up to speed with uh, things as we progress talk to you later Okay, this is the just a little farmer's track um, leading up on the initial stretch of the uh, walk today. But I just wanted to show you the uh, Thanthony Priory from this uh, from this angle. It's a, such a stunning backdrop. So uh, from here, I'm going to be heading just to the left here, and then starting the climb in earnest, literally just after this point. So uh, I'll talk to you when I'm uh, suitably exhausted at the top. See you shortly. Okay, I've taken approximately one hour to make it up to the ridge here above Thanthony Priory. Um, it's a bit of a, bit of a strenuous one, um, but the one saving grace is knowing that from now on, it's pretty flat for the entire distance. Uh, the only problem is I've still got about 16 miles to go. Um, but I have picked the best day ever to come to the Black Mountains, as you can see. So I'm heading right the way down there towards uh, Hay Bluff in just a minute along Offers Path, the uh, trail, it's a long distance trail connecting the south to the north of Wales. Not that I'm doing all of that today. So you've got peaks all around, you've got, uh, you've got Weinbach, uh, the highest peak in the Black Mountains, just out there, the little flat top. Um, you've got good old Sugarloaf just down here, the conical shape, and then you've got the Skirid, just a few of the peaks that I've, uh, Deedham and I have covered over the last few years. But yeah, it's hard to believe that I'm standing on top of a ridge in the Black Mountains with not a breath of fresh air and just the most beautiful blue skies. So uh, I'm going to enjoy this one. I'll talk to you a little bit later. Take care. Okay, we're just uh, about another hour along Offers Dyke Path heading northwest, and I just wanted to point out a couple of other sites. So, out here to the east is the sprawling Hereford countryside, and just along here, the, the, the ridge you see is the Cat's Back leading to Black Hill, and preceding that is the Old Con Valley. And that's a walk that I did just uh, a few months back. Another beautiful, beautiful walk. But uh, I'm literally on the border of the um, of England and Wales right here. So um, although the Cat's Back is part of the Black Mountains, it's also in England, in the county of Herefordshire. On we go. Okay, I'm still on Offers Dyke, heading towards Hay Bluff, but I'm stopping at this point because I've just reached the summit of Black Mountain at 703 meters above sea level, signified by this nondescript little rock formation here. Now, as you can see, it just sits within this very broad moorland area, so it doesn't really stand out at all. But um, there's just a couple of things I'd like to clear up regarding Black Mountain. 
it's not to be confused with the Black Mountains because that's the range in which I'm walking right now and Black Mountain just happens to be a peak within the Black Mountains. Also, uh, and not to be con confused with the Black Mountain Range which sits out in the western section of the Brecon Beacons National Park. So, if all that's nice and clear, I'll continue. I've just dropped down this, this little ridge behind me here and then you get to this point where there's a couple of options, path off to the right and then path more or less straight on. You want to go straight on at this point because you can just about see the trick point for Hay Bluff up ahead. Now of course this is a perfectly clear day so I can, I've can i been able to see it for quite some distance away. If the visibility is not that great obviously you're going to struggle to see it but yeah at this point straight on. Okay, I'm at Hay Bluff at 677 metres above sea level. Trick point just behind me here. This is the most northeasterly part of the walk today. Um, it's now pretty much at the head of the Ewes Valley, or Ewes Vale, sorry. I'm now going to be heading across the uh, head of the valley before heading back to the south along the opposite ridge. On we go. I'm currently walking between the peaks of Hay Bluff and Tumpa, which is just over my left shoulder there. And this little saddle between the two peaks is known as Gospel Pass. And in actual fact, it's the highest road pass in the whole of Wales, believe it or not. It also marks the head of the Ewes Valley, right the way down here. And so I'm going to be heading up to Tumpa now and then on to the next peak uh, of Ross Dirian before heading back down the opposite ridge. Okay, here I am at the summit of Tumpa, or Lord Hereford's Knob, I do like saying that. Um, as I mentioned in my previous visit to, to this location, a bit of a nondescript uh, trig point, but you do get a wonderful view over towards uh, the Hay Bluff escarpment. So now, Heading up to the next plateau, which is Ross Dirian, before heading back south for the uh, welcome return home. See you shortly. Okay, here I am at the summit of Ross Dirian, and this is the most northwesterly of the route today, and this is the actual point at which I start the homeward trek down the opposite valley side. It's a hell of a long way to go still. I think it's still about six, seven miles to go. So um, making good progress, but uh, just needed that break. Okay, time for an update. Um, I'm heading back down um, in a southeasterly direction, down the opposite uh, ridge to the one on which I arrived. Uh, that is back over there. So, I've gone right to the end and then heading back down this side. Now off to the uh, off to my right hand side is uh, Weinbach, the distinctive flat top peak there. And uh, as you can probably see and hear, there's not a soul around. And also, barely a breath of wind. Hard to believe I'm in the Black Mountains still. Okay, I'm on the uh, kind of on the home stretch now. Um, I'm here at Fuarelifan at six, seven, nine meters above sea level. Um, at this point, the the ridge, which has been fairly broad right the way down, um, suddenly narrows. So all of a sudden, the views pick up on either side quite considerably, and they are absolutely stunning, as you can see. So, heading off down the ridge now before the path breaks away to the left to uh, head back down to uh, Anthony Priory. Priory. So, uh, on the homeward stretch and uh, looking forward to getting back to the car. I'll speak to you shortly. Okay, right behind me here is the trick point, trick point indicating the summit of Balmaur. 
and it's a very nice one for me to see because it's the last one I'm going to see today um, because shortly after this I'm going to be dropping down from the ridge back towards Llandony Priory. Okay, the last important thing to mention is this little marker point right here because that's the point at which we officially leave the ridge and head left back into the valley. I'm still going and uh, I'm on the final descent now which is taking an eternity and I don't know if you can see there's Llanthony Priory which still seems like a heck of a long way away but at least I can see it now. Okay I'm I'm on the final, final stretch now. Um, I'll be back at the uh, Lanthony Priory in about 15. The walk's going to have taken me um, eight and a half hours today. And I've got to be honest with you, it's a lot harder than I thought. But that's just me, I always think things are going to be easier than they are. But it's a, it's a bit of an epic one and the, and, the, and the descent from the actual ridge now has been tough because the path's narrow, muddy, and of course you've got tired legs. It's, it's not easy. Um, although the actual walk itself, sorry, excuse me, although the walk itself is mainly flat along the ridges, it's just the sheer distance that takes it out of you. But it's a, it is a stunner, pick your, pick your day, pick your weather and you'll be in for a real treat but word of caution don't come up here if you're you're not in reasonable physical shape i mean this is right at the limits of uh, of my fitness i've got to be honest with you but it's uh it's, it's well worth it if you if you're up to it so a tired gavin is uh, almost back at uh, Anthony priory so from the roaming spices until next time it's goodbye